Hey everybody, let's go see my garden. Come on, let's go. So, look at this beautiful area that I have. Um, and I'll talk about this in just a minute, why we have this big area, but just let's take a little tour. We have some tomato plants right here. These are cherry tomatoes. I have them growing next to this trellis so they can have some support. More tomatoes, these are called Lemon Boy. They are yellow, really sweet, not very acidic. More tomatoes, we have some squash and peppers. Over here I have some spinach. In this little space, I've planted some lettuce seeds, romaine, and another kind of head lettuce, I can't remember which one. Cucumbers, peppers, more squash, more peppers. And I think I have some okra. These are chives. And these um, never die. No matter how cold our winters have, have been, they come back year after year. And I love it when they bloom, they look beautiful. I know that the blooms will make the chives a little more bitter, but I leave them because I just think they're beautiful. I love them and I have three of them. Um, sometimes I even just cut them and bring them in and put them in a vase. Until about a year and a half ago, where you see that paver path, it was just dirt. And we had um, really a, a water problem because we have a slight slope, probably can't tell, but um, the land slopes down towards the house a little bit and it would rain and the water would just wash through there and we would have just mud, just huge, huge mess. And so from an aesthetic perspective, we wanted the path, but also it has um, helped with erosion and we um, we fix some drainage issues all the way out to the street so i have my pretty paver path my husband's really old hobie cat any sailors out there his boat is the hobie and my boat is the kayak that's what i like doing so here's just a little tour of our backyard um, we planted this perennial bed here i've got some day lilies and um, hellebore Lots of irises, um, those are daisies down there. I've got some black-eyed Susans that haven't come up yet. We have a gigantic rosemary bush that I have to prune back all the time. Over there beside that is something, I don't know what it is. My dad is a great gardener and he gave us this plant and I don't remember what it's called. Um, and it's, it has really beautiful different foliage. I do the flowers at church. Um, I don't know, about four times a year. And so I love having the different types of foliage and I'll sniff a lot of this. It looks really pretty in an arrangement. Um, I've got a big Southern hydrangea right there, which gets these beautiful pinkish blue blossoms and a peony. I actually planted three peonies and two of them died, but this one survived and it's done great. It gets bigger every year. Um, so I'll divide that eventually, but it's just about to bloom. It's called Snow White and the blooms are white with just this teeny bit of pink inside. There's our deck with our patio furniture. We ate dinner outside for the first time tonight. It was a beautiful evening. Swing set, which we were really just about to um, give away or potentially sell. And with all this quarantine, the kids have been playing on it and it's fabulous. They're 15 and 13 and they are just having a blast. Um, my office window overlooks the backyard and I sit up there and I just hear them cackling and it's wonderful. There's a stone path back there with some crepe myrtles that are so pretty. Those green things at the bottom are snowbells, so they're done for the year. We need to trim back the greenery. And this is sort of no man's land of the yard. There was a big 
red bud. You see the two um, trees with the red leaves? Those are Japanese maples, and they have just really grown this past year. I love Japanese maples. Um, and right between the two of them was a red bud, which has these bright purple buds in the spring, and it's beautiful. But they have these seed pods that they drop all through, you know, the spring and summer, and they um, they sprout. And so I was constantly pulling them up, and it just drove me crazy. And it was really not a very pretty tree, except for in the spring. And so we dug that up, and I gave my husband the two Japanese maples for his birthday one year. There's some other hydrangeas back there. Those bloom more pink, I believe. We've got just all these sticks in this mess back here. Nobody comes back here except to clean up occasionally, which clearly needs to happen right now. I've got my compost bin back there. We did just have a big storm, so we got a lot of sticks down. My compost bin, which I would not recommend. If I were gonna get a compost bin again, I would get the kind that's a barrel that you can spin. This one, you have to stick the tool down in there and stir it up, and it's just really kind of a pain. It doesn't compost well. So what do y'all think of my outfit today? rocking my overalls from the 90s when this was actually, those of you young whippersnappers, uh, this was actually a hot fashion trend <laughs> in the 90s. And so I still have these overalls because they make a great costume. So when my kids were little and, you know, they would go trick-or-treating, they would want me to dress up. So I'd put on my overalls, I'd put my hair on pigtails, I'd put on a cowboy hat, and I would be a farmer. Um, and so last weekend we were doing a whole bunch of yard work and I was planting the garden. And I thought, I'm going to put on my overalls and my red bandana, and I'm going to embarrass the heck out of my kids. And they did not say a thing. And so we were like three quarters of the way through all of our yard work. And I said, guys, you have not commented on my outfit today. And they're like, we are just so, like, mortified by you. We couldn't even talk about it. <laughs> like, okay. But what I discovered when I was doing my work in this crazy getup was that it is actually super convenient because one, it's big and loose, it's super comfortable. I like I'm covered, but I wasn't hot. And when I'm gardening, I'm down on my knees and you know, my knees get all dirty. And when it's hot outside, like it actually was last weekend, um, I want to wear shorts, but I don't want to be scrubbing the dirt out of my knees. So, anyway, it worked out great. I've got all these pockets where I can put things, big deep pockets in the back. My phone sat in my back pocket the whole time, it was no problem. I've got my little hook for a hammer here, which is actually perfect for my gardening tools. Just be careful if you have something like this. I always have um, my good pruners with me. I got these pruners for Mother's Day years and years and years ago. If you're going to do any kind of gardening or yard work, I highly recommend you invest in a really good pair of pruners. And they'll probably cost you $30, maybe $40. You'll want to sharpen them periodically. There's no comparing between a pair of good pruners and not good pruners and these are so old and they came most of my stuff came from a local garden shop um just a you know local place it's not online but i will link to things as i can so you can um, get an idea of the types of things that i recommend but i chose when i was picking these out i chose a pair of clippers that came with this holster um, because I just hook it onto you know, the waistband of my pants or something, and then I'd have it with me. I don't have to lay it down. I can put it right in there, and I always have it. Um, so I actually like my overalls. And my bandana, you know, the pollen has been so bad. Um, and like I like to use this organic fertilizer that is made from seaweed or fish, and it smells bad. So when I would put out my fertilizer... I could cover my mouth. It was no problem. Then, of course, I was blowing my nose in my hanky because my nose was running because of all the pollen. So, what started out to be just kind of funny, I was trying to, you know, get a laugh out of my kids, turned out to be super practical. And so, um, this will probably be my gardening outfit. I do wear closed toed shoes, not my, not my chocolates. So, I wanted to give you a tour just to do something fun and different. You know, these are crazy days, and I just thought you would enjoy seeing my, um, my backyard and my garden. This is when it looks its absolute best, we've been working on the weeds. I'm really good at growing weeds. I'm not super great at growing much of anything else, but I can grow a good patch of weeds. Um, but we've really been working on it. We've, we've cut them down. Um, I will post for you my recipe for a weed killer. It's vinegar and salt, and it works great. And then you don't have any harsh chemicals in your garden. So, um, But there is a specific recipe for it. I'll post that for you. So we've sprayed some and we've pulled some, but we've really worked hard to get the weeds under control. 
Um, but I want to talk to you about why I garden in the first place. And when we bought this house, the people that we bought it from were not planning to move. It was sort of a spur of the moment decision for them. And they were in the middle of putting in a pond feature right here. So they had done a lot of this beautiful landscaping with the stone wall back there and the crepe myrtles. Um, interestingly, the owners were friends with my father. And, you know, I said my dad is, he's a master gardener. He's great at plants, great at landscaping. And so my dad helped plant and design a lot of this yard, which eventually became our yard, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, but anyway, they were in the middle of putting in a pond. And when we moved into this house, I was seven months pregnant with our first child. We wanted no part of a water feature in our backyard. And so as part of our contract to buy the house, we had them fill that in. So they filled it in and then there was just this big empty space. And I said, that's perfect, we'll have a garden. And I mean, I don't remember, Chris, you might remember how soon we built the beds, but it was pretty early on. I mean, Luke, who's my oldest, was, was a baby still. And my husband built these raised beds for me. We, we brought all the soil in. My brother, who owns a landscaping company, um, he helped with the soil and, and got us all set up. Um, and we've had a garden ever since. And, you know, my grandparents were farmers on both sides. Like I said, my, my dad is, um, he was a florist. He's very good with plants, flowers, that sort of thing. Definitely has a green thumb. So it's kind of in my blood. I think I'm a little bit of a, um, a disappointment in that department. I'm not super great at the whole gardening thing, but I love it. Um, and I thought it would just be really fun to grow as many of our vegetables as we could. Then I could do it more affordably. I could keep everything organic. Just, I love to have control and this lets me have control. But also I thought, I want my children to grow up liking vegetables, eating vegetables, wanting to eat vegetables. And they still, my kids who are 13 and 15, talk about playing in the backyard and picking a pepper and just eating it like an apple. Or um, one year we had a really successful crop of broccoli and you know, broccoli will grow this one big beautiful head like you normally find in the grocery store. And then after you harvest that one big head, it will continue to grow and there'll be all these little sprouts. Lots more broccoli, easily more than what that one big head was. And they would be out here playing and I would see them from the window and they're like picking off all the little pieces of broccoli, which never mind, I had planned that for dinner sometime down the road. I was thrilled that my kids were in the backyard eating vegetables and they just thought it was the best thing and they still do it they love peas i tend to forget to plant peas you have to plant them here kind of in the winter time because they'll they'll come up in the spring um but the peas will grow on that trellis and they would pick them all we would have none of them for a meal they would just eat them all for snacks so that's why i planted the garden it's fun it's about mm, 20 to 30 dollars worth of vegetable plants and seeds um, I spend about $100 a year on the plants. I add some soil conditioners each year. Um, like I said, I use organic fertilizers. Um, you put lime in, in the ground with peppers and tomatoes so they don't get this disease called blossom in the rot. Um, and, and this stuff, which is called deer and rabbit repellent, liquid fence, is the only thing that keeps the deer and the rabbits from eating my plants. Um, so I use about two bottles of this a year, and um, and that's it. It's just water. So yeah, there's some, a little cost of the water, but we get bushels and bushels and bushels of produce. Typically, you know, every year's a little bit different. One year we might have a bumper crop of squash. The next year we have a bumper crop of okra. The next year it's peppers. You know, it really varies. You just have to go into it with an open mind. I'm going to put this little bit of money in, and I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to see what happens. And Something good always happens. Something bad typically happens too, um, but it's okay. You know, the good outweighs the bad. Last year, I grew jalapenos for the first time because I love the pickled, like briny jalapenos. We've been eating them all year. Now my son loves them. It's expanded his palate. He'll eat spicier things now. Um, we still have gobs and gobs of those from last year. So I didn't plant jalapenos this year. I planted banana peppers and hopefully we'll get banana peppers and I'll pickle um, banana peppers. Um, when you're I planted okra just for the heck of it, just to see if it would grow well, and then my kids 
loved it. So it has really introduced them to uh, new foods that they would have probably not eaten or been willing to try otherwise, but there's something sort of magical about the fact that it came out of your backyard. And it's wonderful all year long to be able to go to the cupboard and pull out a quart of tomatoes to make chili soup or spaghetti sauce or, you know, pizza sauce. Um, I've experimented with different things through the years. I've canned pizza sauce, I've canned pasta sauce, I've canned salsa, and it's all good. It's just really a matter of how much time do you want to spend. I'm going to do some canning videos this year, assuming we get some, some crops. Um, but that's really wonderful. I mean, you feel so proud of yourself. It's like, I did that. I planted that plant. I took care of that plant. I harvested these vegetables, and now my family gets to eat that really um, high-quality, nutrient-rich food all year long. Okay, let me give you just a few tips. First of all, I'm in North Carolina, so if you Google what planting zone am I in, what gardening zone am I in, you'll get this map. You can put in your zip code. It'll tell you what zone you're in. I'm in zone 7B, and that tells me when I should plant different things, what plants will grow well here, what plants will not grow well here. So I would recommend you take a few minutes and just do a little bit of research if you want to plant a garden. This section of the video is going to be about how to get started with some gardening. Everybody can do it. When I lived in an apartment and all I had was a patio, I had a pot with cherry tomatoes in it, and I had fresh cherry tomatoes through the season. So no matter what your living circumstances, you can probably find a place to plant something and give it a try and maybe you are growing it inside by a window okay um, but I'm going to talk to you about outdoor gardening you don't need a raised bed you just need a space that gets a lot of sunlight and you need some dirt and you need some nutrient rich dirt so you might have to supplement depending on where you live but find out what zone you're in what plants grow well where you live um, those charts will typically also tell you what plants are compatible and which plants are not compatible so you might not want to plant squash right next to tomatoes. That's actually okay. I can't off the top of my head think of something that isn't compatible, but that exists, so find that out. Think about what your family likes to eat or what you might just like to try. You know, if you look at the list of plants that grow well in your region, there surely will be something that will be novel to you. And you think, that would be fun. So either find a garden center that sells plants or seeds or order some online. Um, and then plant your plants, you know, just look it up. If you don't have a master gardener in your family that can tell you how to do it, you need to go to YouTube. You need to find out how to plant that particular type of plant. And there's an expert out there that can tell you how to do it. I'm not an expert, um, but I can just tell you a couple little things that we've done that have made our lives easier. I bought a bunch of tomato pages. These actually were a gift from a friend. Mine were plain metal and she had these pretty colored ones when she moved she couldn't use them anymore so she gave them to me I will put these around my peppers all right so if you have a plant that needs to be staked which if you don't know look it up you know but you could think about it a pepper think about a bell pepper that's big and kind of heavy um, the plant is not a tree it's just like a little bush and so the peppers will weigh down your plant it will snap they will snap very easily even in a windy day so I always stake my pepper plants, and you want to do that when they're small, because if you wait till they're big, then you've got to fit your cage around your plant. You're going to end up snapping some of the some of the branches off. So I waited to do this so I could show you. But typically, as soon as I plant them, I will put my cages on. So these are really inexpensive. They're usually called tomato cages, but I'll show you what I do with my tomatoes. So you put your cage on, put it deep enough into the ground so that it's stable. And then you'll probably need to use a stake to just lend some extra support. So you just weave this in and out of your um, horizontal bars on your cage. And again, dig this into the ground. And depending on you know your climate, do you have a lot of really windy weather? You might need to put, put two, but typically one is enough here. And then as my pepper grows, I just pay attention. You know, I'm out here checking on it really every day during the season. Does it need water? We have a lot of really hot weather here. Sometimes we have a lot of rain, sometimes we have no rain. So I'm just needing to check on my plants. So I come out, I check on them, and I notice that this branch is hitting right about here. I'll just gently kind of lift that leaf over so it grows within the cage. And then the plant is supported, the peppers are supported, 
um, and hopefully my plant will not be damaged by any windy weather. So we, we thought long and hard about how to protect our plants. Um, we've had lots of things happen. Like one year we were swarmed with birds and actually the birds are kind of a big problem. They will peck at the tomatoes. They like wiped out my whole tomato crop one year. Um, so I have to end up putting nets over, which is really a pain for me. So I don't like to have to put the bird nets in, bird netting out. See, they can hear me talking about them. <laughs> They're plotting right now. Um, I've given up on planting green beans because you plant the, the little bean, like you open a green bean, it has those little beans on the inside. That's basically what you plant to grow a green bean plant. But they sit on these trees and they watch me and they come and then they eat them all out of the ground. As soon as I plant them, I've watched them do it. So, you know, some things I just decide that's a losing battle. And then other things like fresh tomatoes, I'm willing to fight for my tomatoes. Um, but tomatoes get big and heavy as well and need to be supported. These cages just don't cut it for tomatoes. I just don't recommend it unless you're growing like a little like patio type tomato. So we put up these big supports, which what are these galvanized steel? Is that what these are? These are what, like 12 foot galvanized steel poles with the, you know, the angle bracket. This is plumbing stuff. My husband got it all in the ground for me. We use paracord. This is when it comes in handy to have a boy scout. Um, who tied all my knots. These are, what do you call this kind of knot? Taut line. This is a taut line. So this one was left out here, so it might not be very flexible. Oh yeah. So it moves like this. And when my tomato plant gets big enough, I have these little clips. These are little gardening clips. I just bought them online. They clip together like this. Mine have lasted, I think I'm going on my fourth or fifth season with them. A few break, but I think I bought a pack of 100, not expensive. You hook this around this loop, and then it connects, this one will just pull off, it connects to your plant. And it's gentle and it doesn't hurt the plant. It loops over, so then there'll be one on this side, so I can support two plants with this one piece of paracord. And then as the plant grows, I have to adjust the, you know, the length. And so this system, super inexpensive, super low tech, and has just worked really, really well for quite a few years. So we have these holes over each of the beds and um, tomatoes I stake up like that. Um, I've even done squash. I've had squash get huge a couple times. Um, the okra, I've sometimes staked up, but, but it's mostly for the tomatoes, and that system works so well for supporting my tomato plants. If you're interested in planting a garden, you want to try to plant some vegetables, and you have specific questions, just leave a comment and ask your specific question, and I will either answer it for you, um, or I'll find out the answer, I'll send you someplace else, I'll tell you I don't know. Uh, but like there are a couple tricks, like I told you, you put lime in with a couple plants, it changes the pH of the soil. Um, so there are a few tricks with different plants and I would love to help you in that way because I'd love for you to experience the joy of growing some of your own produce. Um, but there's too much for me to just tell you. So um, I'd rather you just ask specific questions if you have them. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of my garden and this little tutorial on getting started with a vegetable garden. As I said, you certainly don't have to have anything like we have. We just happen to have this space uh, and nothing else to do with it. I didn't want to have this much grass to take care of. It gets a lot of sun. So it was really, I was like, oh, this is a gift, you know, to have this space. It's really perfect for a vegetable garden. Um, and I'll tell you, it is, it is some work. And most years I end the season and say, you know what, I'm gonna not plant a garden next year. And then I always do because I want my fresh vegetables. And honestly, it's so fun. The kids really enjoy it. They're old enough to help more now. And um, it's just so exciting to see how the season comes. My son, has, his, he loves pickles. That's his favorite food. And so I grow the cucumbers for him and he's in charge of them. And he picks them and he processes them and he makes pickles and he eats 99.9% .9 of them. Um, but the pickles, the cucumbers, those are, those are his responsibility. Um, so it's just been really fun to see what the kids have been drawn to and how it has um, 
help them develop their own taste buds. And we just love having this fresh produce. And especially right now, kind of not knowing what's going on with the groceries. To know that in about six weeks, I'm going to have some stuff in my yard. That's pretty exciting. I would love it if you would consider subscribing, hitting that thumbs up hit the little bell icon so that you will be notified when I go live, when I post a new video. Typically I post every Wednesday. It's usually in my kitchen, I'm usually making something for you. Always paleo, gluten-free, often in the Instant Pot, but sometimes we just gotta shake it up a little bit. The whole world is shaking up right now, so we just have to do something different today. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.